Praise the Lord, somebody. Praise the Lord, church. Welcome to Mercy and Miracles. Today, God is going to meet our needs. Did anyone come this morning expectant? Are we can, I, can you wave to Jesus? If you, come, if you came expectant to receive something from the Lord, wave your hands to Jesus. Praise God. As we begin, to, um, to, as we begin this service, we need to prepare our hearts to receive from God. And we are going to be praying. Praise God. Hit your neighbor and say, it's time to pray. Tell your neighbor, it's time to pray. Please come with us um, stand up on our feet. And just raise our hands to heaven. Raise your two hands to heaven and begin to just give God thanks. Give God thanks. Remember the last miracle he met in your life. Remember the last time it was he, he came through for you. Give God thanks. Mazumbre do shkataya, bazumbre de shkatibro shkata. It's time to thank God. This is not an interlude. It's time to give God the praise. Mashiko bredo skataya brada shata. Balibro sendeke samashanata. If you have a prayer language, begin to pray right now. Mazimbro shkende bro sata. Ikala mazendo skoto shada. Hendeko si breta. Ikala mazende kere bo shamata. Ama sendeko samata. Hendo ko shima ledeke. Hendeko seme sendeke. For he that speaketh in, in tongues, give a ten to all. Masu pende ko samasha, hende ko payada. Ikala masende ke, hala masendo posia. Ike mana mashada, ikala paye posia de yada. Ayada mana kaya paleto, ikali pronete, kala basando pa. Ella mana mashande ko zap, maneke. Alabaya mata, hekele bende kopa, masia, hende keka, masa dapaya, hey, masende, is someone expected this morning, masendo shkapa, masende ka, heteya, 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 la basa moshete, masa badaba, hete potapa, makopaya, hekele bongshata, masate, 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 Sate, the Messiah that we write stories, the Messiah that we write stories, the Messiah of God that we write stories, Masatayaba is at work in this service. A peto shibai, a supposi pie, Masha Gadabadaba, a topo de ponaya, Ikea Manama, a Gadaba Suprende Koti, Makala Mashandi, Ataya. Is somebody praying this morning? I'm a sendeke, a Kalama Shandapaya. Is somebody praying this morning? Matayaba, hey, Mateya, Makala Mashandapa, Ekea, prepare your spirit to receive from the Lord. Shanta. It's a spiritual atmosphere. It is a spiritual atmosphere. Anna Kope, Anna Kope, Anna Kope, Anna Kope, Anna Badaba Sandaka, Etekota, Ekeleba Shanta. Lord, all you have in store for me in this service. I want all. 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 Now prepare your spirit by praying in the spirit. Atakata. Some noise. Are you excited this morning? It's mercy and miracle service. Let us make some noise. Welcome someone to church. Tell them you're welcome to church this morning. Say with excitement, you're welcome to church this morning. Come on, put those hands together. Come on.
Your name is greater, your name is greater, greater than all. It's real simple, Jesus. Your name is greater, your name is greater, greater than all. Let me see you put those, come on. Are you excited? Come on. All right, come on. Sing Jesus. Impossible for cheese. 
turned into wine. It's real simple, join me. Come on. You open the eyes of the blind. Say. I can't get you for some reason. Come on. Into the darkness you shine. Say.
seated in God's presence. Very shortly we'll be rising to pray and this morning we'll be thanking God for the mighty miracles and wonders that we have consistently seen at our miracle services. Psalm 77 verse 11 to 14 says, I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember thy wonders of old. I will meditate also of thy work and talk of thy doings. Thy way, O God, is in the sanctuary. Who is so great a God as our God? Thou art the God that does wonders. Thou hast declared thy strength among the people. Please let's rise as we take this prayer together. Say, Father, we thank you for the mighty miracles and wonders we always see at all of our mercy and miracle services. Lord, we thank you for indeed you are mighty in our midst. Can we lift up the sound of prayer this morning to the Lord? Thanking him for all the mighty things, all the mighty wonders, the mighty miracles that we always see at our mercy and miracle services. God has blessed us, O oh God, with his presence at these services. We see diverse healings. We see diverse miracles. We see people coming into the fullness of their prophetic destiny at this meeting. Let's give God all the praise. Let's thank him from the depth of our hearts. Let's remember the works of God of old. Let's thank him, O oh God, for all the healings that we have experienced at these services. Let's thank him because because God is so mighty in our midst. Let's give him all the praise because at this mercy and miracle service we have seen the mighty hand of God like never before and today is another time where God will still show himself mighty in our midst. Let's give him all the praise. Let's thank him from the depth of our hearts. If there's any specific miracle, if there's any specific testimony, remember, give God all the praise for those testimonies. Thank him for those miracles. Thank him because he has shown himself mighty on our behalf. Father, we thank you. We give you all the praise. Thank you, Lord oh God, for your mighty works, your mighty acts, oh God. At previous look and at, at previous mercy and miracle services, we give you all the praise. Thank you, Lord Jesus, because even today you are set to do even much more in the name of Jesus. Now let's lift up our voice in thanksgiving by praying out loud in the Holy Ghost. Give thanks to Him in the Spirit. Oh, shala balakita randoso keshele bele kete frendo sokoto mishanda lakita. She brende sekete, ishala balakoto frondoso, mekete brandisa, ishala balakoto, ibradoso, leshele bele kete frendoso. If God has done anything for you at these services in the times past, or He has done anything for your neighbor or your friend, raise your voice in thanksgiving. Give God all the praise. Be genuinely thankful. E kasho brandese, e katala bande, e kaso frondo sokoto, me shende lekete, ibradese. Sekete shala balakoto so frondo so minda sakita shele bele kete frondo sokoto me shanda lakita rando so le balakita brande sekete e shana malando so ko brande se e kasala bande sekete. Thank you, Lord, O oh God, for your mighty act, O oh God. Thank you, Lord, for your wondrous deeds, O oh God. Oh, and our mercy and miracle services, O oh God. Father, we give you the praise. We give you the thanks, O oh God, because you have shown your mercy. Oh God, on our behalf, oh God, oh your mercies, oh God, they endure forever, oh God. Father, we thank you. Cobra deshe le sakita randoso ke shala balakita randoso kuto shobra de sekete shela malande eka sofrondoso me shanda lakita brande sekete eka sofrondoso. You have forty more seconds. Raise your voice in thanksgiving. Give God all the praise. Eka 
so prandese e shalaba makita prandese kete e shala mandoso koso so prondoso i kasala balakita shele bele kete enda sokoto so prondoso i prandese kete e shala balakoto so prondoso thank you lord jesus for indeed you are mighty in our midst thank you lord Father, we thank you. Lord, we give you all the praise. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, for showing yourself strong and mighty at our previous mercy and miracle services, oh God. Thank you, Lord, because today, oh God, you will do exceedingly, abundantly, far above more than we have seen in times past. In Jesus' mighty name, can the whole church give God a resounding praise? Just put your hands on your chest and say, today is my day. I receive mercy today. Lord, I know your bowels are moving with compassion for me. Oh, thank you, Jesus.
27, the Bible says, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Who can answer that? God is saying, Is there anything too hard for me? Praise the Lord. Let us rise up and pray. Let us rise. Shall we rise up to pray? Say with me. Say, Father, we acknowledge that there is nothing hard for you to do. We declare that by the hands of your servant, Pastor Ayo, sicknesses are healed, signs and wonders erupt, and there are diverse testimonies in today's service. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Oh, pray with passion. Pray with passion. The Bible says the earnest heartfelt prayer of the righteous man makes tremendous power available dynamic in its working if your prayer will be answered your prayer has to be heartfelt don't look at me close your eyes focus on your prayer let your prayer be heartfelt this morning let your prayer touch you your prayer must touch you before your prayer will move anything that prayer has to touch your soul open your mouth and pray Father, we acknowledge that there is nothing hard for you to do. Lord, we declare that in this service, in this mercy and miracle service, we declare that by the hands of your servant, Pastor Ayo Ajani, we declare that sicknesses are healed, signs and wonders erupt, and there are diverse testimonies in the name of Jesus. Oh, Bacatele Mondo Prevecine de Candeliande. Oh, Father, we thank you. Today, your power is present to heal. Your power is present to deliver. Your power is present to save. In the name of Jesus. 
Jesus. Yes, miracles, miracles are up. Miracles are up in the name of Jesus. Call by the Kelebotone. today's mercy and miracle service. Father, we know that there is nothing that is hard for you to do. We thank you, Father, because today as your servant, Pastor Ayo ministers, people receive their miracles in the name of Jesus. Every word from your servant comes to pass in the name of Jesus. Sicknesses are healed in the name of Jesus. Every need is met in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You can have a Cisco bless you. Come on, try Petra. Give Jesus a shout this morning. Can we give God some more praise? Come on, somebody jump on your feet. Jump on your feet. Jump on your feet this morning and say, thank you, Jesus. The Bible says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and to his courts with praise. One person says, enter with a password, thank you. Can we give the shout of thanks this morning? Come on. Oh, and you
You may have your seat in God's presence. Praise the Lord. In a brief moment, we'll be rising to pray. If you have your Bibles with you, kindly turn to the book of Galatians, chapter 3, verse 5. And I read, He therefore that ministereth to you the Spirit and worketh miracles among you, doeth he it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. Can we be upstanding at this moment as we pray together? Can you take this prayer together with me? Heavenly Father, today I receive the ministry of the Holy Spirit in every area of need in my life. I declare today every need is met. I declare that I receive my own miracle today. I testify. Go ahead and lift up your voice and begin to pray. First in your understanding and then in the spirit. Today you testify. Today you receive your miracle. Today you receive God's word for you. Today you receive that one word that will change your life forever. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, we declare this morning that our lives will be changed forever by the power of the Holy Ghost. Today we receive all that you have for us in the name of the Lord Jesus in every area of our lives our needs are met by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of the Lord Jesus we shall say that we enjoyed the mercies of the Lord today today is a day for a miracle in the name of the Lord Jesus now if you've got a prayer language go ahead and pray in the Holy Ghost recommando
Father, we give you all the glory, all the praise. Our hearts are open and ready to receive all that you have for us this morning. And we receive it with gladness. And let the people of the Lord shout a resounding amen. Please have your seat in God's presence. Jesus. Praise Jesus. This morning, just like we had during the praise session, we can't, we can't just be calm. We have to be undignified because God has done so much for us in this house. It is testimony time. Glory to God. I'll be reading out two testimonies of God's faithfulness to us in this house. The first testimony is from Sister D.O. She says, some years ago, I found out I had fibroids, but I was told it was nothing to worry about. However, over the years, they grew and became worrisome. Later on, my periods became heavier and longer with a lot of clothing. I even began to consider surgery as the doctor said that was the only way out. A friend shared the link to one of the healing services and Pastor Ayo was teaching on the woman with the issue of blood. That is your cue to share the link for this, for this service now on your WhatsApp status. She says, at the same time, I was also dealing with a urinary tract infection. During the course of the meeting, Pastor Ayo gave a word about someone with an infection. I decided that I would not leave this service with any sickness in my body. She says, to the glory of God, it has been months since I had abnormal bleeding. She was not even in the... Online, stretch out your faith this morning. There is no way, there is no how. Distance is not a barrier in the spirit. God can touch you anywhere you are. We give God all the praise for this testimony in Jesus' name. The second testimony is from, the, is from a brother with the initials SS. to achieve them. He says the Holy Spirit told him that if his annual income can cover it, then it is not fit. He says if he'll be able to achieve everything he wants to do this year through his annual income, then that is not fit. So he had to either make a decision to achieve everything that he had written for the entire year. The Holy Spirit told him that he should now compress it to achieve it in January alone. He says so he had to draft another list for the year while the initial list for the entire year has now become his January list. And he says, while looking at that list, it was impossible for it to happen. He said, the truth is that I didn't even believe it could happen because I am still a core member and I wasn't anyone much. But the word of God through Pastor Ayo kept coming to me, shaping my belief system to believe for these big things. He says, to cut the long story short, that is his but God moment. <laughs> he says, I achieved everything on my first list with the exception of three things in January alone. <laughs> Glory to God. That is not the end. He says by February, by the end of February, everything on his first list was done completely. <laughs> Glory to God. He says, indeed, this is the year that wisdom built. Ten years like one month. He says, I believe it with the whole of my life. Church, can we rise and give God all the praise for these mighty, mighty testimonies? What he wrote for the entire year, in January and February alone, God made it happen. Lord, we give you all the praise. Let's just take 30 seconds and give God all the glory in your own words. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God like it's your own testimony. Because what God is doing for one, he's doing for all. Let's give God all the praise. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We have returned as a church of God today to give you all the praise. Thank you, Lord, for healings. Thank you, Lord, for quantum leaps, oh God. We return all the glory to you. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Please, let's be seated in God's presence. Hallelujah. Help me touch your neighbor. Say, neighbor, mercy is a higher ground. One more time, say it again. Say, neighbor, mercy is a higher ground. I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I'm onward bound. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. 
I'm pressing on the old broad way. There are new heights I'm gaining every day. I'm still praying as I'm on board now. Lord, plant my feet on high ground. So, Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table. It's a higher place than I am. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand. My faith on heaven, stay blessed. It's a higher place than I am found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Cause I drink from the fountains of mercy. I soar on the wings of your grace. I walk through the doors of great favor. Your mercy is speaking for me. Is that you this morning? I drink from the fountains of mercy. I saw on the wings of your grace. I bust through the doors of great favor. Your mercy is speaking for me. I'm drinking from the fountains of mercy. I saw on the wings of your grace. I walk through the doors of great favor. Your mercy. You're speaking for me. On that night, the king could not sleep. I drink from the fountains of mercy, and the books were open. I saw the wings of your grace. I walked through the doors of great favor. Your mercy, your mercy, your mercy. This morning, books are open. Here's the mercy. Here's the mercy you're speaking. Here's the mercy you're speaking. His mercy is speaking. His mercy is speaking. On that night, the king could not sleep. And the books of the records of the Chronicles were open. And it was found. Your mercy is speaking for me. Say that loud, sing it. Your mercy is speaking for me. Your mercy. Your mercy is speaking for me. Is anybody like here? Get this morning singing. Your mercy is speaking. Anybody needs God's mercy, shout it out. Your mercy, your mercy is speaking for me. Is speaking for me. Your mercy, your mercy is speaking for me. Your mercy, Lord. The enemy may come like a flood.
morning. I can see you. Do you believe Messi is speaking for you this morning? Say, Messi is speaking for me. Messi is speaking for me. Turn to three persons. Declare it with faith, with confidence, boldness this morning. Say, Messi is speaking for me. Messi is speaking for me. Messi is speaking for me. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please, you may be seated. Praise God. Hallelujah. Who is living here changed this morning? Who is living here with a miracle this morning? I can't see your hand. Who is living here with a miracle? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Can we turn our Bibles to the book of Mark chapter 10? Just to prepare our hearts to receive him as God's servant to you, sent to you. Praise God. I want us to see a story here about someone in the Bible. Mark chapter 10, verse 46. Read a couple of verses and just point out a few things for us. It says, and they came to Jericho. They came to mercy and miracles. Amen. They came to Jericho, and he went out of Jericho with his disciples in great number of people. And since blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. So observe what he was doing. He was begging and says, and when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. He began to cry out. Now, he was blind. So there, he would not have seen this from the Bible, from the scriptures, from the scrolls. There's no possibility that he would have seen this and seen where it was written that Jesus was the son of David, right? But he must have heard somebody talk about Jesus. He must have heard somebody. I mean, some of you must have heard the testimonies. You heard testimonies this morning. All right? And what did he do? He believed what he heard. That's why he was shouting. The moment he discovered that Jesus is the, oh, is Jesus passing by? Is Jesus here this morning? He began to scream and says, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Now observe that in verse 48. It says, many charged him that he should what? Hold on. Hold his peace. I mean, your own is too much. Keep calm. Keep calm. You're disturbing us. But look at what he said. He began to cry out the more. He cried out the more. Amen. This morning, don't allow anything distract you. Amen. Not your neighbor, not the environment. Jesus is here this morning and is here for you. Are you ready? Are you ready? It, as much as they tried to dissuade him to calm him down, he was not ready to listen to them. He was crying out for mercy. And believe me, God's mercy is going to speak for us loud this morning. Is a month of mercy. Praise God. The mercy of God that brings restoration. The mercy of God that intervenes in situations. All right. Remember what Pastor shared with us. But God. Amen. Several but God moments this morning. Praise God. Hallelujah. He began to cry. He says, and Jesus stood still. Now observe something. Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called blind Bartimaeus, the man, saying unto him, Be of good share, rise. He called thee. Somebody's faith is going to get the attention of heaven this morning. Praise God. Hallelujah. He says, And casting away his garment, he rose, came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, I want us to read that part, part together. What we doubt that I should do unto thee. Now, is it that Jesus is unaware that this guy was blind? Why would he ask, what would you have me do? You see, there's a principle here. Faith has to be specific. There's the specificity of faith. 
Somebody here, I mean, don't just, I mean, you, you're here this morning, is messing of miracles. But what is your expectation? Because you can come to church this morning, is another Sunday service, is another miracle service. Do we understand it? We know that God will show up. But it's a different thing that God, you know that God will show up for me concerning X, Y, Z. I'm putting out my faith, Lord, I am not living here the same way. Jesus is asking you this morning, what would you have me do? Praise God. And the blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. So this morning, if you didn't come with an expectation, all right, before the, as the service progresses right now, I want to give you an opportunity to get your expectations together. Be specific. There is something that God wants to do in your life. The mercy of God is speaking on your behalf, but it's, I mean, it's not just arbitrarily. There is something that he wants to do right now. Amen. And you have the opportunity. You're standing before greatness. You're standing before God. And you can receive anything. I want to let you know, it says all things are possible to him that believes. And so regardless of the situation, I know nobody can help you with it. I know that probably you have tried some other means. But guess what? Jesus is here this morning. And all things are possible to him that believes. And if you will believe him, believe his word, believe in him like blind Bartimaeus did, you are going to live here with your miracle. Are we talking this morning? Who is living here with their miracle this morning? I've given you a scripture you can base your faith on. Anything is possible to him that believes. So does that your situation include anything? Is it part of anything? I want you to know that, all right, you're going to stand by faith this morning and you're going to express your desire in prayer. We're going to rise up on our feet right now. I want you to talk to God for yourself. What is it that you want? What is it that you want God to do for you? Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. His faith caught God's attention and it was specific. Now go ahead and begin to request, make that ex express your desire before the Lord this morning. In a couple of minutes that we have, express your desire. Lord, Lord, that I may receive by sight. Lord, that this would happen, that will happen. Lord, that this situation would change. Lord, I believe you. I believe that my life is turned around this morning. Lord, I'm asking for this healing now in the name of Jesus. All things are possible to him that believes. Open, your, open up your mouth this morning and express your desire. Express your desire. Express your hunger. Express your expectation. What is it that you want this morning? What is it that you want this morning? What is it that you want this morning? What are you expecting? God is rewriting stories this morning. God is visiting you this morning. God is changing the story this morning. God is turning around the situation this morning. Come on, somebody with faith, with hunger, with desperation. Open up your mouth and begin to pray. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. There's the mercy of God that brings increase. There's the mercy of God that brings increase. There's the mercy of God that changes our stories. There is recompense. He said 10 years in one month. 10 years in one month. 10 years in one month. Come on, lift up your voice. Begin to thank him. Begin to give him praise. Believe by faith you have answers. Go ahead and give him praise. God is sending his word to you this morning. Go ahead and give him praise. Go ahead and give him thanks. Blessed be your holy name. Precious Father, we thank you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for one word from you that will change our lives forever. We thank you for the ministry of your spirit. 
Thank you because not one single situation that is before you this morning will, 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 that will not go on, on touched, unanswered in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you for miracles. In Jesus' name we pray. Can you shout a bigger amen? Come on, somebody shout hallelujah.
the Lord is beautiful to you, I want you to lift those hands towards heaven. your two hands towards heaven, close your eyes, and learn just to soar on the wings of the Spirit. Learn just to soar on the wings of the Spirit. Lose sight of everything around you, everyone around you. Just stay on that, stay on that. I want to hear the strings. Can I hear the guitars? Come on. Can I hear the guitars? The glory of the Lord is in the house this morning. The glory of the Lord is in the house. your eyes wherever you are all over the auditorium I want you to see this beautiful Jesus close your eyes and lift those two hands towards heaven lift those two hands towards heaven
happening around you. I know there's a lot of ugly things, terrible things, things you may be unhappy about, things you want to change. You're looking out for a change. But everything changes when you see this Jesus. Everything changes. Everything changes. Everything changes when you see how beautiful he is. When you see how wonderful, how glorious he is. Everything changes. Everything changes. Because you are Jesus. Lift your hands towards heaven and bless him in the spirit. The glory of the Lord is in the house this morning. The presence of the Lord is here so strong. your eyes and fix your gaze on Jesus. It won't take anything from you. It will only add to you. Close your eyes and fix your gaze on Jesus.
su esquina de mí no
everything all right? Oh, you didn't hear me. I said he makes everything all right. I said he makes everything all right. I said he makes everything all right. My God. Look at the person beside you. Point at them. Tell them he makes everything all right. 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 Thank you, Lord. He is alive. He is alive. He makes everything all right. We all to your grace. And forever to One more time. I didn't say to stop. Ooh. I didn't say to stop. Neither did I say to stop. All right, without the instruments, just the voices now. Want to go all my life. All my life you have been and I want to hear the musicians sing with their mouths now. Loud. Oh, it can be louder than that. I'm sure it can be louder than that. Drama, just give us a rhythm. With your kick, just with your kick, give us rhythm. Everybody with a loud voice now, one more time. Now we're going to sing it one more time, the last time. And with every breath that you're able, you're going to sing the song this morning. One more time, all my life.
Lord, we thank you. All of our life, we look through the past. You have been faithful, Lord. There's none to be compared to you, Father. This is your hand. This is your doing. You have done all things well. Jesus, you have done all things well. There's nothing left that you haven't done well. Jesus, you have done all things well. Our hearts are filled with gratitude, with praise, with joy. Jesus, you have done all things well. 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 Somebody say with me, Jesus, you have done all things well. Come on, say it one more time. Jesus, you have done all things well. Jesus, you have done all things well. We give you praise and we thank you. Oh, give the Lord a shout. Give the Lord a shout. Give the Lord a jump, a clap. Come on now. Go ahead and come. Woo! Ma, 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 ma. Hallelujah. Today is a very special day to me. Because today marks for me the faithfulness of God. The Lord said to me, He said, Leave the city of Lagos and come into a land where I knew nobody, had nobody, had no, no, I mean, absolutely nothing. <laughs> we were landing on the uh, I think it was 13th of January. We're landing into the city. And my wife looked at me and said, where are we going to stay? From a six-bedroom duplex in Lekki, Lagos. Living the life. How do they say it? La vida. La... Come on, talk to me. What, what did you say? Pastor Musa, I know you will know it. Thank God you are born again. He would have been giving us a lot of problems. So tell me, what did you say? Say it. You say it. <laughs> Living la vida loca. What does it mean? Come. Bolas. Soft life. Okay. And um, it was soft. I'm telling you, if there's anything called soft, life was soft. And we landed and my wife looked at me and said, sweetheart, where are we going to stay? I said, <laughs> I said, you know, I was like Abraham who said, the Lord shall provide. Because I didn't know. And then March, um, we had our first public meeting. And I look back today. And um, we have our brethren connected from Apo now. We have our brethren connected from Maraba now. Manchester is connected as we speak. Say hello to them. <laughs> Canada is connected as we speak. Um, Lagos, Portacot, Accra. All because God is faithful. So I don't know about you. When I'm singing the song, I know what I'm saying is really a faithful God. He can be trusted. He will never mismanage your life. Did you hear what I said? You don't have enough intelligence to manage your life half as much as he will manage it. Trust him. Did you hear what I said? Trust him. In walking with the Lord, you have to understand that you won't understand everything while you're obeying, it's in retrospect. You look back and say, Lord, thank you. Lord, thank you. And that's what my heart is filled with. Thank you. Just saying thank you. Just saying thank you. I'm just full of gratitude and praise. 
And pardon me if that's all I do in this service today because I'm all a bag of emotions this morning. I know you all don't have emotions. You're stoic like the rock of Gilbrata. And when you're not emotional, then you're mature, right? Pardon me for being immature this morning. But the Lord has been faithful. Close your eyes and lift your hands towards heaven. When I look into your holiness, when I gaze into your loveliness, when all things that surround quiet, quiet, if you're going to sing it, you sing it solemnly. And all eyes closed at this point with your hands lifted towards heaven. I worship you. everything in the organ. Come on, Emeka. Turn it up. Feel the whole room.
There is no name so sweet. There is no name so sweet. <laughs> Come on with a loud voice, sing all over the room. With a loud voice, reverence him this morning. What can make me all again? 
Everybody with a loud voice praying the Holy Ghost all over the room this morning. With a loud voice praying the Holy Spirit all over the room this morning. With a loud voice praying the Holy Ghost all over the room this morning. My God, what a presence of the Holy Ghost here this morning. the Holy Ghost all over the room. Pray the Holy Ghost all over the room this morning. Everybody praying in the Holy Ghost all over the room. With a louder voice praying in the Holy Ghost all over the room. The Lord Jesus is visiting you where you are. He knows what you need. He has the answers. My God, I know more than I know my name that Jesus is here. In his glory and in his power, I know when that anointing is there. I know when that anointing is there. I know when the anointing of the Holy Ghost is there. With a louder voice, pray in the spirit wherever you are. The Lord is already touching you. Oh, maybe you came with a pain in your body. You came with a growth in your body. You came believing the Lord for a miracle. For adventure, you came for a touch. You need direction for your life and for your ministry. You need direction for your business. Peradventure, you've been in that dry hole. The Lord is refreshing you today. Rivers of living water are flowing over you right now. The Lord is here in the temple. His glory fills the house this morning. Come on with a loud voice praying the Holy Ghost where you are. With a loud voice praying the Holy Ghost where you are. With a loud voice praying the Holy Ghost where you are. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your love, for your grace, your kindness, your goodness. Thank you for your compassions. 
Thank you for your benevolent God, a generous God. We worship you. From the depths of our hearts, we give you praise. Blessed be your holy name. Blessed be your holy name. You came to this church as your last resort. Somebody invited you and they said to you, why don't you try God and try this church? You had tried to take your life a couple of times. And you have been in the congregation for a couple of weeks, per adventure months. And at times, you sense that presence of God and you think, oh, I think the Lord has something for me today. And then you sink back into that hole. And somewhere at the back of your mind, you're saying to yourself, I know soon all of this will be done. And then I do it myself, whatever I want to do. It's almost as though you're just dragging yourself. Peradventure, something is going to change. And you're at that point where you're saying, I could end it all. I could end it all in just a matter of time. All eyes closed. I want you to lift your hand towards heaven. That's a demon spirit. It's a demon spirit that causes you not to see the light that's waiting for you and puts a weight on your shoulder. Where's that person? Lift your hand, your right hand. I want to pray for you. If you're in the crowd, lift your right hand and I want to pray for you. I can see that hand. I know there are two more persons who need to be prayed for. If you're lifting your hand, please lift it well. There's nothing to be ashamed of. Your deliverance is the love of God. I can see that hand. I can see that hand. Raise it well. Raise it well. Raise it above your head. Yes, so I know who I'm praying for. So I know who I'm praying for. Keep your hands lifted. Sing that song. There's a river just quietly and solemnly there. There's a river that flows. Just keep that hand lifted where you are. Now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whose I am and whom I serve, I rebuke that demon spirit. I decree and I declare that you're free now by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thou foul devil. You know who I am and you know whom I serve. I command you to desist I command you to take your hands off their minds I decree and I declare let joy fill that heart now let light fill that heart now in the name of the Lord Jesus yes we thank you we bless you of all the people who raise their hands put your hand down I don't know, I, I just saw somebody telling us exactly what happened. The reason why, uh, and for someone to see the gravity, who is that person? I mean, you, I mean, there are quite a number of people that raised their hand, but there's one person who wants to tell us why, why you've been in that place and how long you've been in that place. Oh, are you raising your hand to tell us? Come, quick. Come, come tell us. Come tell us. The Lord showed me a lady. And it's fine that the young man is coming out. Oh yes, Paul saw a man of Macedonia, but it was a woman that received them at Macedonia. So I, I do understand that, but there's a lady who needs to say something. Talk to me. Why did you raise your hand? Good morning, church. I raised my hand because I want to, first and foremost, if I say this now, it doesn't matter because even though I'm ashamed, I know they will probably wouldn't be seeing me for a long time. And I want to clear my heart out because I've been all by myself and there's nobody to talk to, there's nobody to express the pain, there's nobody to share it. There's nobody to see how damaged I really am inside, even though I built the wall to cover myself up all this while. Now, can I tell you something? How long have you been coming to this church? couple of months three just, just about three months yes, beautiful 
I hope you know it's not a mistake that you've been coming to this church and today the Lord singles you out. Now, I don't care how damaged you think you are. Did you think at the back of your mind that the Lord would have a word for you when you were coming in for this service? Did you think the Lord was going to sing you out like this and speak to you? Did you think so? I didn't know he was going to single me out, but I just knew he was going to do something in my life today. I just had that feeling in me that... And I hope you know this is the end of all of that. Now, I know there's a lot you want to say. I don't want you to say it publicly because you're going to see the pastors and talk to them much later. But look at me. Hear me well. You're going to preach the gospel. Did you hear what I said? You're going to preach the gospel. The hand of the Lord is resting upon you. And that which the enemy meant for evil is turned around now. Saith the Spirit of the Lord. Yeah, so you see me after service. Praise God. What a Jesus we serve. Oh, by the way, I know there are lots of bodily healings happening already. And um, we would have the time to just take one or two of them. Um, the bodily healings happening already. We would have the time to take one or two of them in just a bit but what a jesus we serve tell the person beside you he's already at work thank you lord sit down for a bit sit down for a bit thank you lord hallelujah praise the lord hallelujah glory to god thank you lord jesus praise god praise god praise god are you glad you're in church today? It's mercy and miracles. Now, I, 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 I was told that um, they had a bit of a, a technical issue, and I know they're sorting it out a couple of... Um, so if you calm down, the hall will calm down, okay? So just calm down, okay? And I know you want to find yourself, but it does more harm than good for others. So allow the air circulate and all the rest. Find yourself a bit if you have to find yourself. But in just a second, a moment, everything will be calmer. Praise God. Hallelujah. Say this with me. March. This is my month. Wait, how many of you were on the prayer call, watchtower? The problem with that answer is everybody that shouts glory, they'll think they were there. I just want to be sure how many of you were on the, at Watchtower on the prayer call? Wow. So the, the others, what were you doing? Soundly asleep. Amazing. Amazing. All right. Those of us that were at the Watchtower, you know what I'm talking about. Lift your right hand to, <laughs> thank you. Lift your right hand towards heaven and say with me, this is my month. This is my month. The month of March. March. Wear mercy became my overwhelming advantage rewriting my story that's our affirmation for the month of march lift your right hand up again and tell me this is my month the month of march where mercy became my overwhelming advantage rewriting my story one more time shouted with a loud voice this is my month the month of March. Whose month is this? <laughs> All right. So say again. This is my month. The month of March. Where mercy became my overwhelming advantage. Rewriting my story. You believe it? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Psalm 145. Today is Mercy and Miracles, and um, throughout this month, we're teaching on the subject of mercy, but I'm going to do a stand-alone um, uh, message here, speaking about the mercy of the Lord as it re relates to healing and miracles, Psalm 145, Psalm 145, praise the Lord. Can we read verse 8 and verse 9 together? Psalm 145, verse 8 and verse 9 together. One to go. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, 
slow to anger, and of great mercy. The Lord is good to all, verse 9, and his tender mercies are over all his works. Read it one more time. All right. No, 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 I, I meant you go back to verse 8, okay? And then we read verse 8 and verse 9 together. One to go. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger, and of great mercy. The Lord is good to all, and his tender mercies are over all his works. One more time. Come on, read it. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger, and of great mercy. The Lord is good to all, and his tender mercies are over all his works. Now, if you've been here for a bit, you know I've shared several times about the mercy of God and how that, um, you know, a lot of times people see the mercy of God as anytime somebody says, I need mercy, what are people thinking of? He has sinned. Am I right? We always see the mercy of God in the light of sin. And yes, mercy deals with sin, but it's far more than that. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 4, it talks about the mercy of God. Verse 1 down to verse 3, gory story, terrible story. Children of wrath, children of disobedience, appointed unto destruction. And then it says in verse 4, but God. And if you are around for the watchtower, we had a but God session. Praise God. And I showed you five instances in which the phrase but God is used. Right? And we prayed about those things. All right. It says, but God who is rich in mercy. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 4. Say with me, God is rich in mercy. God is rich in mercy. It says God, but God who is rich in mercy for his, um, for his great love wherewith he loved us. God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us. And so, if you've been around a bit, we've spoken extensively about how that mercy is the very nature and the character of God. It's the very nature and the character of God. To know God as a powerful God and not know him as a merciful God is not to know the real God. Are you following what I'm saying here? You see, that's what differentiates the God that we serve from the God that they serve. I hope you know that some of their gods can demonstrate some form of power. Oh yes, some of the gods can demonstrate some form of power, some form of um, supernatural occurrences and all the rest. But only our God is rich in mercy. Only our God is rich in mercy. Now, what is mercy? What is mercy? All just to bring us up to speed, whether or not you were around for the last series on mercy or not, so we have the same understanding of the subject. Today, I'm actually teaching on God's healing mercies. God's healing mercies. Say with me, God's healing mercies. Mm. Yeah. And um, we're going to see miracles today both in our physical bodies and any miracle that you need. Did you hear what I said? Yes, We're going to see miracles. We're going to see miracles. God's healing mercies. Now, what is mercy? The best way to, is to describe it, not define it. Okay? And I always use the description of a woman who is, I've never given birth to a child, but I was there when my wife was um, giving birth. Um, I think twi two of them or three of them, I'm not sure. And um, um, that last moment of the push, <laughs> it's not anything to, uh, it's not nice, at least for a guy. You know, I vowed after the first one, this is the end. Until I saw the boy and I wanted another one. Are you getting what I'm saying here? And um, I was there, I saw the press, the push for the baby to come out. When he talks about mercy, it's talking about the overwhelming press, push of God to do you good. Are you following what I'm saying here? Let me use something that's not too nice, but might describe it better, particularly for the guys now. Have you ever been pressed before? And you were driving your car. Have you ever been pressed before and you were walking down. Uh, you know how you walk. <laughs> and then Pastor Tosin stops you and says, go and check the AC. 
<laughs> are you getting what I'm saying here? I don't know if that's ever happened to you. I know you're all, uh, you know, your biological clock works just prim proper, you know, um, and all of that. You're nothing like that. But if you know what I'm talking about, you're having a meeting, and they think that you're under the anointing of the Spirit. Mandove agli gushtande gebaya yatwata. It's a press, and until you press, you cannot be okay. Mercy is the press of God to do you good, and until he does it, he cannot be okay. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying here? So we're not talking of a flimsy, light, spiritual truth. No. No, say with me, God is rich in mercy. Say it one more time. God is rich in mercy. <laughs> All right. Put it this way. God is pressed to do me good. Mm. Please sit down. God is pressed to do me good. And I just want to read you a few scriptures here and there just to, you know, build our faith to receive from the Lord that which he has for this morning, for us this morning. Look at Psalm 106. And you observe that the doctrine of mercy was most thought by David. No other person, no other writer in scriptures seems to have the revelation of mercy that David had. Look at Psalm 106 and verse 7. Quite a number of scriptures here, but um, I want you to have them so you can meditate upon them later on. Everybody read verse 7 there, want to go. Our fathers understood not thy wonders in Egypt. Hold on. They saw the wonders but did not understand it. And what does it mean when it says, our fathers understood not thy wonders in Egypt? They saw all that God did. Now, the psalmist then adds another sentence to qualify what he just said. Read the next sentence. They remembered not the multitude of thy mercies. All right, so when the water turned to blood, what was it? A demonstration of power or a demonstration of mercy? Come on, talk to me. When flies were flying everywhere for the deliverance of Israel, there was darkness upon Egypt and lights in Goshen. When all of that was happening, come on, talk to me. What caused God to do it? You know, on this side, what you see is power. We say, God is so powerful. But what did the psalmist say? Was the causative? What was it that caused God to do it? It says, they remembered not what? The multitude of thy mercies. Every miracle is a demonstration of the mercy of God. And, and let me rattle you a bit. It's not necessarily a demonstration of the power of God. Now, you need power. Power is deployed for the miracles to happen. But it's not primarily a demonstration of God's ability and God's power. No. It's a demonstration of the mercy of God. Are you following what I'm saying here? It's a demonstration of the mercy of God. Now, when we understand that miracles, divine interventions, and all of that a demonstrations of the mercy of God, it takes your faith to another level. Too many people have their faith in the power of God, and that's beautiful, but strongest faith is faith in the mercy of God. I'm going to show you in scriptures in just a bit. Greatest faith, the greatest faith you can deploy, you can muster, is faith in the mercy of God. Look at Micah chapter 7, verse 18. Just a couple of scriptures to get your spirit excited this morning. Micah 7 verse 18. All right, let's read together. I want to go. Who is a God like unto thee that pardoneth iniquity? And it says, passed by the transgression of the remnant of his heritage. Everybody read that last sentence. He retaineth not his anger forever. Why? Because he delighted. Come on, say with me. He delighted. What's God's delight? Mercy. He delighted in mercy. He delighted in mercy. Okay. Go to Psalm 86, verse 15. Psalm 86 and verse 15. Psalm 86, verse 15. We're going to talk about the healing mercies, but I want you to just have a general foundation. Everybody read one to go. But thou, O Lord, art a God full of what? Compassion and gracious, long-suffering and what? Plenteous in mercy and truth. 
Hallelujah. As you begin to study through the Gospels, you realize that um, we have majored on the fact that if somebody needs a miracle or healing, then they should build their faith. And yes, the Bible does speak of that. But in respect to healings and miracles in the New Testament, more is spoken of the mercy of God than your faith. That's not to say faith is not spoken of. But it's an interesting thing that as you study all the healing miracles of Jesus, more is actually spoken of, of the mercy of God than your faith. I'll show you a couple of scriptures. But let's start from the epistles of Paul and see the connection between mercy and healing. Go to Philippians chapter 2. Philippians, the second chapter. Hallelujah. You know, because there are those who disqualify themselves. They say, if I had strong faith like this person, <laughs> all you need is faith in the mercy of God. That's all you need. I heard what the pastor read to us. He said, shouted at Jesus, Jesus, thou son of David, what did he say? Have mercy on me. They understood that mercy covers everything. He didn't say, give me my sight. He said, have mercy on me. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Look at Philippians chapter 2, verse 25. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 25. Hallelujah. It says, yet I supposed it necessary to send to you Epaphroditus, my brother and companion in labor and fellow soldier, but your messenger and he that ministered to my wants. For he longed after you all and was full of heaviness because that he had heard that he had been sick. So Epaphroditus was sick, am I right? Good. It says, for indeed he was sick. And everybody read the next sentence, the phrase there. I want to go nigh unto what? Death. So it was not just any kind of sickness. Now I want you to see what Paul says next. He says, but God had mercy on him. He says, and not him only, but on me also, lest I should what? Have sorrow upon sorrow. Hmm. What did Paul attribute the healing of Epaphroditus to? Hold on. Paul is a healing evangelist. If he had laid hands on him, and he could have. Don't get it wrong. He may have laid hands on him, but it would seem to me that the condition lingered because he said he was sick and nigh unto death. You don't get sick and you are nigh unto death immediately. Oh, you didn't get what I said? No, no, no. The symptoms come up, and then it would seem like maybe they had had some because um, they were himself together. He was his fellow prisoner at the time. Maybe he had had some um, interaction with him, prayed for him, and then gotten the saints together to pray for him. Are you following what I'm saying here? Maybe he went for a healing service, and every other person got healed, and Epaphroditus still had to go back home with his sickness. Are you getting what I'm saying here? And then after a while, Paul gets the message, and he says, Epaphroditus, your companion, your friend, is on the sick bed. He's about to die. How he got healed, we don't know. But what healed him, we know. Is somebody following what I'm saying here? He says, look at it. He says, God had mercy on him. Now, everybody look at me. Today, God will have mercy on you. Oh, your amen is very weak. <laughs> and it's not just for bodily healings. Remember what I told you about the mercy of God, that immediately mercy is introduced. The next thing we say is, but God. Which means everything is going like this, and then God, you see, because mercy is the game changer. I've shared this over and over with you. God introduces his mercy, and everything was going like this. All of a sudden, we're like, what happened all of a sudden? But God. But God. Genesis 8.1, you read newer translations. He says, but God remembered Noah. I know without a doubt, God is remembering someone here today. Now, you know God has no amnesia, am I right? Yes, so it wasn't as though he forgot Noah. He was the one that locked the door of the ark. He was the one that sent the rain. Am I right? Yes. I don't think that God went on another trip or did. He said, oh my goodness. Have you guys released Noah? <laughs> There's no AC. <laughs> I'm not sure that's what he was. It's talking about that time of divine intervention for the set time to favor you has come. Is somebody listen to what I'm saying here? And I can tell you for free, your set time is here. Amen. Hey, brothers and sisters, I'm already speaking in the capacity that God has established me in. <laughs> so, 
If you're all thinking, I'm, I'm going to wait till maybe the end and then lay some hands and all the rest, you better receive what you want to receive now because God is already distributing gifts. I'm telling you the truth. Say with me, but God. But God. Mm. Say again, but God. But God. All right. So how did Epaphroditus get healed? He said, come and talk to me. But do you say, <laughs> can we go back to Philippians chapter 2? Philippians chapter 2. It says, for indeed he was sick and nigh unto death. Everybody say with me, but God. <laughs> All right. That's one of the but God moments. It says, but God had mercy on him. It would seem to me, it's almost as though Paul was saying, um, maybe he was weak in faith. You get what I'm saying here? It would seem to me as though Paul was saying, I'm not sure it was all the prayers that we prayed. I'm not sure. I, are you getting what I'm saying here? It would seem to me that the situation was so grave. And when there was a turn around, he said, this is the mercy of God. He said, God had mercy on him and had mercy on me also that I might not have sorrow upon sorrow. Mercy. Mercy. Hmm. Are you still here? And so there's, there's the dimension of the mercy of God that brings us bodily healings. And beyond even just bodily healings, miracles into our lives. I believe in miracles. I believe that the mercy of God can meet you where you are and totally rewrite your story. If you have been here long enough, you've had enough to believe. If you... It was, if it was difficult for you to believe based on just the word, there are brethren all around you. Are you getting what I'm saying here? There are brethren all around you to tell you that this is true. And, you know, my burden has just been, it won't be 1, 2, 10, 15. It will be everybody. Amen. You know, because it wasn't just a few that left Egypt. It was everybody. Yes. Are you following what I'm saying here? So I don't care where you are right now. Before this week is over, everyone under the sound of my voice is returning with a testimony. Yeah. This month of March is your month. Yeah. The mercy of God will rewrite your story. Yeah. Please lift your two hands towards heaven. This month of March is your month. Yeah. The mercy of God will rewrite your story. Yeah. Now, I stand in the fullness of my office and I decree and I declare, let everyone return with stories that are unbelievable to human logic. Yeah. Within seven days, yeah. everyone will return with stories that are unbelievable to human logic. Yeah. Now, somebody shouted, this is my month. This is my month. This is my month. Hallelujah. This is my month. Please sit down. Much of what my assignment this morning is to declare the prophetic word. Because we're entering a new season as a church. I'm not just teaching. I'm not just sharing this morning. We're entering a new season as a church. And so beyond just sharing with us doctrine and all the rest, which I've done over the years, and you know there's no issue with that. I could take you six hours. My heart, my assignment from the Lord is to prepare us as a church for the next phase, as a ministry for the next phase. Ministry is in phases. Are you following what I'm saying? God does not give everything or measure everything at once. Now, why am I sharing this with you? Because you all are partakers of my anointing. That's what Paul said to the Philippian church. You all are partakers of this grace and this anointing. So it's critical that you know what the Spirit of the Lord is doing. Are you following what I'm saying here? And for that next phase that God is leading us, there must be strong men, both in the anointing and in the natural. Are you following what I'm saying here? There must be strong men. So I'm fully persuaded that before, within this year, ordinary men will be raised to heights that they could only imagine within this year. I'm fully persuaded. Listen, hear this and hear this well. I, I don't need you to believe what I'm saying. Stones will rise up, if that's the case. Your words have no impact over this house. My words do. Your own belief has no impact over this house. It's my faith that does. Is somebody listening to what I'm saying? So sit down and enjoy the ride. 
Is somebody following what I'm saying? I have heard God. I have seen the future. I know where we are going. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? I have heard God. I have seen the future. By the way, you were not there when God said go. So when God says go again, I mean, you were not the one who made it happen the first time. Are you following what I'm saying? But if the Lord has brought you here as a partaker of this thing, in came, I saw. Maybe I should tell you what I saw. Usually we don't share um, supernatural experiences a lot of time because at the end of the day, people then put their faith more in supernatural experiences than the word of God. But I was kneeling before the Lord. I was out of town. I'd gone to minister somewhere. The Lord woke me up early in the morning. I was praying and began to speak to me about the next phase. My wife will remember. I was chatting her later on that morning. Look at what the Lord is saying. Look at what the Lord is saying. And I saw myself standing before a field without end. And there were shrubs everywhere. The Lord said, look again. And I looked. And within those shrubs, mighty oaks began to rise up. God said, he said, listen, I have shown you some measure of fruitfulness and productivity. He said, now it's not fruitfulness and productivity, it's greatness. I knew what the Lord is saying. And I am fully persuaded that there are oaks like that in this house. Now, I'm glad this morning that our brethren connected from everywhere around the world are connected. Churches and all the rest. So that everybody understands what the Lord is doing in this season. I trained as a medical doctor. If I needed money, I would be practicing medicine. But oh, goodness gracious. How many of you give tight? For oh, goodness gracious. I, I don't even take your tight from you. I don't take a salary from the house. What's your business if you give tight? It's you and God. It's you, God, and Devora. Do you get what I'm saying? It's your business. Is somebody following what I'm saying here? I mean, I could be practicing medicine somewhere. We are here on assignments. God said to me, you belong to the lineage of the leading prophets. I know what he's saying. Is somebody listening to what I'm saying? So if you all think you have seen anything, get ready for a ride. I said what? Get ready for a ride. Get ready for what? A ride. Get ready for a ride. We're talking about God's healing messes. I don't know why the Lord would just have me say that to you. But you see, I found out that it's like priests like people. When the season changes over a house, it changes. It, the house is not brick and mortar. It's people. Yes. 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 Moses was head over the house. There was no building. But he was head over the house. Jesus being head over his own house. No building whatsoever. Every house in scripture, oiko domio, always refers primarily to a people. Are you following what I'm saying here? So if the season has changed, be sensitive to know that the season over your own life too is changing. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? Hallelujah. It was not by chance I was sharing with you running with the horses last month. No. These are prophetic preparations for what the Lord has for you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I mean, very soon I'll call you, Emmanuel. Emmanuel, I need you to be here. Say, Pastor, sorry, I quickly went to Dubai for a meeting. <laughs> Glory to God. I, I sent you a message. Didn't you see it? No, I've been too busy. There are too many messages. I can't answer everything. Enjoy your time there. Greet the shake for me or whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> Glory to God. Are you following what I'm saying here? So we mean the mercy of God. That it is, it is what rewrites our stories. Yes. Esther one day was selling at Balumo in Obomosho. No faith! Tell me what Esther confessed. I believe I'm the queen. I believe I'm the queen. I believe I'm the queen. <laughs> queen I am. Queen I am. I believe I'm the queen. Manua tenenge awa. Esther must have prayed deep prayers. Vashti, misstep. <laughs> God, everyone sitting on my seats, uproot them. Ene, bagua, ene, shana, imba, aga, fire, ega. You, you know, can I tell you something? The greater part of your miracles, the greater part of adventures in your life, the greater part of beauty and glory in your life will come by the mercy of God. There's something I want to show you today. Put yourself in the place where mercy can reach you. Too many of us have disqualified ourselves from mercy because of it. I'm going to explain this to you today. Too many of us have disqualified ourselves from mercy. I mean, Odims, why do you think this will happen? You know, sir, I've been confessing for seven days. I've been praying and fasting. And that's the reason he thinks it will happen. Sell me by the mercy of God. I said, sell me by the mercy of God. Nobody will be able to explain your story. 
Did you hear what I said? Oh, you didn't hear what I said? I said, nobody will be able to explain your story. I said, the mercy of God is stepping in. In the name of Jesus. Esther, how did you become queen? I don't know. (laughs) I don't know. God caused Vashti to make a mistake. I don't think it was a mistake. This must have been a practice. She only did it at the wrong time. (laughs) And the people said, if this is shown to all the women in the nation, they will dishonor their husbands. She has to leave. And Vashti, by one error, becomes dethroned just so that a, an Agbalumo seller with two marks, quick, quick, from a woman show, <laughs> can become queen. <laughs> so we may mercy. <laughs> Glory to God. Well, let's stay within the word. Let's stay within what we are sharing this morning. My whole being is just turned upside down by the anointing. I'm telling you the truth. <laughs> I know that anointing when it's there. And it's an anointing to make men, to raise men. Are you following what I'm saying here? <laughs> I went to a church, a gentleman, one of my sons, I was preaching there. And I said, I said, millionaires are rising out of this church. And I think I gave a time frame. He called me recently. He said, I don't understand it. He said, everybody is almost that, almost every two weeks, three weeks, somebody breaks into the millions. And you know, the, I mean, millions now has to be qualified. <laughs> because you can have million and not be a millionaire. <laughs> Are you following what I'm saying? Yeah? And it's some of the strangest jobs. It's not as if they were getting jobs in multinationals and all dress. Just strange things happening everywhere. So this gentle, just communicating God's word like this is powerful enough to change everything. Powerful enough. Are you following what I'm saying here? Yeah? Look at Matthew chapter 14. Let's look at a few scriptures. The mercy of God brings healing. The mercy of God brings healing. Matthew 14 verse 13 and 14. Please, we'll just look at these scriptures here. And then I pray. Next week, we start a proper series on the mercy of God. Okay? It's going to run throughout the entire month, um, teaching on the subject of the mercy of God. But let's take out mercy, the healing mercies of God. All right. Everybody with a loud voice, can we read together? I want to go. Jesus said of it, he departed thence by sheep into a desert place apart, And when the people had heard thereof, they followed him on foot out of the cities. Next verse, verse 14. Everybody read one to go. Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion toward them. And he what? Healed their sick. So Jesus didn't heal to demonstrate power. Jesus didn't heal anybody because he wanted to demonstrate how powerful he was. Every miracle and every healing was always because of his heart of compassion and love. Are you following what I'm saying here? If you understand this, then it changes everything. You realize that, hey, whilst there is what you must do, you understand that the mercy of God will even fill in the gaps. I heard the story of a certain woman who was in a meeting, a major crusade, and it was an overnight crusade, and she slept from beginning to the end. It was at the end when everybody shouted, Amen! Amen! She shouted, Amen. She was on a stretcher. As she shouted, Amen, she jumped up, healed completely. You know, there were people that were awake. (laughs) There were people that were awake from the beginning of the meeting to the end. Who may have returned without a miracle? Come and say with me, mercy. Jesus went to the pool of um, Siloam, or where is it now? Not Siloam, pardon. Bethsaida, Bethsaida, which having five porches. And there was a rendezvous of broken humanity, like Reverend Chris, right? Hilo man would say, I mean, broken humanity all over the whole place. And Jesus left everybody to look for one man who obviously had no faith. Go and read the story. Are you ready now to be healed? What would you have me do for you? Ah! Hmm. Have you entered Uber before? And it becomes obvious to you that they were waiting for who we asked them, how are you? I entered one, one day I said, God. I said, how are you? Hmm. From, from the beginning, this was years ago. From the beginning, I don't know if that still happens now. Please pardon me. But I mean, from the, it does. From the beginning of the conversation to the end. He went on like a skilled craftsman. 
He just went from one problem to another. And usually it's never anything nice. One problem to another problem. How he was working in a bank. Now he's doing this. Now he's that. Now he's that. And I sat down there completely subdued and overwhelmed by the skillfulness of this man. That's what this man at the pool was like. Jesus just mistakenly asked him a question. The man said, hey, 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 hey. Can you imagine? My brother-in-law came here yesterday. He just looked at me. He didn't even help me. There's no man to help me. He started reeling out his problems. There was no exercise of faith whatsoever. Yet he got healed. Is somebody following what I'm saying here? There's something about the mercy of God that goes beyond our infirmities and our weaknesses. Are you listening to what I'm saying here? Matthew 20, you can study from verse 29 to 34. You see the same thought. Um, can we have that Matthew 20, 29? You see the same thought there. It says, um, I, I believe um, this was read. A great multitude followed him from Jericho. Run quickly. Next verse. Two blind men sitting by the way when they heard Jesus pass by, cried out saying, have mercy on us, O Lord, thou son of David. Remember I said to you, I said the greatest prayer you can pray is Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. It's the greatest prayer you can pray. That thing you're praying about, you don't have all the information. Are you following what I'm saying? You are saying, oh God, please remove my boss. And he's not your boss. He's your best friend. You're saying, oh God, and you're praying amiss. Are you following what I'm saying? It says, Jesus, thou son of David, what? Have mercy. And that's what they prayed. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Have mercy on us. Oh, did he have mercy on them? Absolutely. Look at Mark chapter 1. You see that there again, Mark chapter 1, um, verse 40 to 45. And you can study this for yourself. But I want to show you another scripture there, Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5, verse 19. Mark chapter 5, verse 19. And it's a chapter 5, verse 19 of Mark. Um, if you know this story, this is talking about the madman that was healed, Okay. You remember the story of the madman that was healed at Gadara, right? Now, how be Jesus suffered him not, but said unto him, Go home to thy friends, tell them how great things the Lord had done for thee. Everybody read that last sentence, they want to go. And had had compassion on thee. Just a second, everybody, please. I need your attention. Can a madman exercise faith? Talk to me. If the precondition for every miracle and every healing is faith, can a madman exercise faith? Come on, talk to me. Can the madman say, Jesus, heal me of my madness? No. So we may have gotten it wrong when we teach and present the message to people as though the only precondition for getting a miracle and being healed of the Lord is the exercise of faith. No. This man was mad. There was no family member who was interceding for him. There was no one who brought Jesus. Like Jairus said, come and heal. No, it wasn't that case. He was a madman. Jesus just came into town, saw him, and he had what? Mercy on him. Um, I heard the story of a preacher. There was a member of his church who was in the ICU, and was, his life was hanging in the balance, was actually practically dead. And at the time he got there, there was no family member there. And the preacher said when he entered into the place, these were his words, um, his associate who was with him outside couldn't enter because it was the ICU. When he came out, he said, what did you do? He said, the man is unconscious, so he cannot exercise faith. But I leaned in on the mercy of God. Is somebody following what I'm saying here? There's something about the mercy of God. Let me read you a few things the Holy Spirit said, and this will help you. It is not what God can do. No, that's not the matter. It's not what God can do. It is what you know that he longs to do. It is not what God can do that builds faith. No. It is what you know that he longs, he yearns, he's obsessed to do. Oh, dear, 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 dear. If I asked somebody with cancer now, 
Do you believe that God can heal the cancer? Do you know what they will say? Yes. There's nobody who doesn't believe. Hey, come on now. Can I, everybody look at me. Can God heal cancer? Talk to me. Oh, come on, talk to me. All right. Don't let's go that way. Can God make you a billionaire, whether in naira or in dollars, overnight? Hello? Do you believe that you can wake up tomorrow morning and mercy has rewritten your story? Because <laughs> I think that's a good story to tell, right? Yeah. Mercy rewritten your story. And, and is that possible? Yes. You know where the challenge is for many people? And that's where we then build a theology. Our theology many a times is not built on whether God can do it. For the Pentecostals and Charismatics, we've moved past that. Our theology is that we've not been able to convince ourselves that God is more willing to do it than we could ever imagine. And so because we are here, we believe God can do it. We are not too sure of his willingness. We have the sense knowledge God is willing, God loves me and all the rest. But it's not become strong revelation in heart. You know what we build? We build sets of doctrines that there are seven steps you have to qualify. Uh, you get what I'm saying here? Because somewhere at the back of our minds, we know God can't do it. But then, if God can't do it, why are we not seeing it? So, seven qualifications, seven steps to healing, seven steps to prosperity, seven steps to this, seven steps to that. I'd like to ask you, how many steps did the man at the pool of Bethsaida take? How many steps? Come on, talk to me. How many steps did he take? Come on, talk to me. The widow of Nain, who was carrying her only child, and was carrying the child to burial. If there was any faith, you won't take the child to burial. She was going to burial because there was no faith there. This is the end of it. Can I ask you a question? How many steps did she take to get Jesus to touch the briar and raise up the boy? How many steps? Hear this. There is the stream of faith that brings miracles. And there's the stream of mercy. You have to understand this. These are streams. Of the kingdom. There's a stream of faith and there's a stream of mercy. Mm. So write this down if you're taking notes. It is not what God can do that inspires or builds faith. It is what we know that he yearns to do. Which means God, hey, let's go back to our definition of mercy. God is pressed to do you good. God is pressed to get the growth out of your body. God is pressed to change that story. Are you listening to what I'm saying here? This is important, as simple as it is. That's what builds great faith. You know, the challenge is, our theology, modern theology, gives more attention and magnifies the power of God. Much of our songs are songs speaking of the power of God. But as you study true scriptures, Never at any point did he say God is power. Are you following what I'm saying here? It always says God is powerful. God has ability. But God is love. God is rich in mercy. Is somebody following what I'm saying here? That's where the, that's where the challenge really is. In the moment we can make that switch. Hey, God wants me healed more than I want myself healed. He does. So, Lord, I lift my hands and I worship you. I call it done in the name of Jesus. Thank you, for this is your obsession, that my physical body be in wholeness. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Are you listening to what I'm saying here? At the point you make that switch is the point the miracle begins. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Mm. It is not faith in God's power that secures the blessings, but faith in his love. And his willingness. Faith in his love and his willingness. That's what secures the blessing. I have found out, and I think the first person I heard this from was, I think, F.F. Boswat. I have found out that God would rather have you doubt his ability than his willingness. I found out God would actually, okay, Pastor Tosi, you have a son, you have a daughter. Which is more painful if your daughter says to you, um, now, everybody stay with me. They're driving down the road and they see a wonderful house and the daughter says to you that, and, and you know, because if we're not careful, we train our children in doubt. 
and he says, um, I want this house, but daddy does not have the money. Yeah. Is that painful? Really painful. You look at the child. What did you just say? In your life. <laughs> Yet, two days after, if the child comes to you to tell you to buy something, you say, I don't have the money. You are the same person who trained hard to speak that way. Well, let's imagine that you have the money, and your daughter knows you have the money, and then she says to you, I know daddy does not want us to live in that kind of house. I know. That if we ask him that is no, he will say. He can buy it too. But he would rather that we are suffering. Which hurts the more? I would rather that you doubt my ability than you ever doubt my willingness. Hear this. Unfortunately, the church does not doubt the ability of God. Ask any believer. God can do it. You know what people doubt? His willingness. Will he do it? And because we can't claim that he will not do it, we put it to the future. Whenever he wants to do it, at his own time, he makes everything beautiful. Have you heard people say that before? And that sounds deep, but what are they doing? They are postponing the willingness of God into a distant future to accommodate their doubt. Now, everybody with a loud voice, say this with me. Father, Father I know you can, I know you and I know you will. I know you will. Oh, you didn't say it as though you meant it. I know the doctor told you you have a growth in your body. I know the doctor gave you a report or whatever it is. I know that yes, yes, your heart, there's palpitation, whatever it is. I know you have those reports on your phone and all the rest. With a loud voice, I want you to say, Father, Father I know you can, know you can. And, I know you and I know you will. Now, let's put it this way. Enkem, stand here. Have you ever been pressed before? You've been pressed before. Yes, How do you walk? You are leading prayer. Maybe because you opened the service now. Yes, I heard you telling people, let's pray. Yes, so imagine at that time when they told you it's time to start the service. You were pressed. Tell me how you'd be leading the prayer. <laughs> no, that's Inkem, you're even when you're not pressed, you're more animated than this. <laughs> Have you seen Brother Inkem leading prayer? Everybody stand up now. <laughs> so you can't deceive us this way. No, this is deception. Before the church of Jesus. All right, let's do it this way. Do the normal one. Because the normal one for you is the press for another person. Do the normal one. Pray now. Now, be pressed, be pressed. Now, continue, con continue. Oh, dear, 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 dear. Continue, continue. There's a reason why. Continue. No, in camp, there's a way you do it. You do like this. Continue, continue. Now, God is pressed. God is pressed in your behalf. Now, somebody shout it. I know you can. I know you will. Just a second. Income, hold on. Thank you. I know many of you think God is just seated on the throne there with his leg crossed. Like, oh, they need a miracle. Have they fulfilled the condition? Ah, seven steps to say faith. It's only three steps. He will wait there. No, let me tell you how God is seated. Ah, ah, ah. Are you getting what I'm saying here? Hear this. God is more willing to give than we can ever be willing to receive. Is somebody following what I'm saying here? Now, say this to me. God is pressed with my healing. God is pressed with my miracle. God is pressed with my increase. Shout it, but God! But God. But God. I need you to cross over from that place of God is willing I, I mean, God is able, and not just to God is willing. No, he's pressed. He, it's not something he can hold. Are you following what I'm saying here? The, the equilibrium is not balanced. There's no equilibrium. There's no stability to, the, to that ecosystem until he gets this thing out. He's pressed. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying here? 
That's why you can walk out on that sickness. Are you following this here? You can say, Father, I want to thank you. I know I'm the healed of the Lord. I receive my healing now. In the name of Jesus. You can. You can. Say with me, God is pressed. Say it one more time. God is pressed. Please sit down for a bit. Sit down for a bit. Brother Inkem, that was not being pressed. <laughs> and one day by the Spirit, I will catch you. <laughs> Glory to God. Who of you would have dramatized it better? I think it's for lush. It's naturally drama. Do you get what I'm saying? <laughs> Praise God. So it's not faith in God's power that secures the blessings, but faith in his love and in his what? Willingness. Now, let's go back to the scripture we started with. I'll read you two scriptures, and then we pray. Because we're going to pray this morning. Psalm 145. Put it up on the screen, verse 8. And I want us to take it one by one. Psalm 145, verse 8. All right. Everybody read that first sentence. Want to go? The Lord is gracious. Write it down. Now, let's, let's examine, investigate the character of this God that we're talking about. The Lord is who? Is what? Come and say with me, the Lord is gracious. Now, what does it mean? He's disposed to show favors. His disposition is to show favors. The Lord is gracious. Are you following what I'm saying? His disposition is to show favors. That's what it means to be gracious. Number two. Read with me. The Lord is what? Full of what? Compassion. Say with me. The Lord is gracious. And the Lord is full of compassion. Now, what does it mean to be full of compassion? Compassion there does not mean sympathy. To say, hey, yeah, sorry. No. Compassion is the willingness to suffer with and for another. Are you following what I'm saying? The willingness to suffer with and for another. So he says the Lord is gracious. The Lord is full of compassion. The willingness to suffer with and for another. It's the reason he went to the cross. Are you following what I'm saying? here? Took our place, took our sicknesses, took our lack and our wants took our confusion and gave us his life. Are you listening to what I'm saying here? Show me the Lord is full of compassion. Number three, the Lord is slow to anger and of great mercy. The Lord is slow to anger and of great mercy. That word slow there means long suffering. Now, but let me explain what long suffering really is. It means that you have, hear this in the Greek, what it means is that you have an object ahead of you, but you are so slow that irrespective of how long, you will never meet up with the object. Are you following what I'm saying? So when he says the Lord is slow to anger, which means there may be situations that cause for anger, but the Lord is so slow that he never meets up with anger in your matter. You have to, listen, you have to understand the meaning of a word from its roots. In essence, they use that word slow to describe the inability to catch up with desire. The inability to catch up with an object. So they say this person is slow. Are you getting what I'm saying here? He's slow towards this thing. So when he employs that word and he says the Lord is slow to anger and of great mercy. He says you will never be in a place where you will see the wrath or the anger of God in your life. You will never be there. Why? Concerning you, the Lord is what? Slow to anger. Slow to anger does not mean that he takes his time to be angry. Hmm. You know there are people like that. They don't get angry. Have you heard people say things like, I don't get angry. But when I do. You know there are people that get angry every, every now and then. I'm not like that. I'm not. Have you not seen? They'll just be shouting and all this. You may never see me angry for three months, for six months, even for one year. But the one day, I'm warning you. I'm beginning to sense it. It's rising. The tides are rising. I'm warning you. you. You don't want to see my anger, my red eye. I'm warning you. I'm warning you. I don't get angry. I really don't get angry. You know, because that's what we think slow to anger means that God is warning you. I'm warning you, in camp. This is the you're doing. I'm warning you. No, that's not what it means. It means slow to anger. Never catches up with that object. Are you following what I'm saying here? And it says, and of what? Great mercies. What is the next phrase there? Look at the next verse there. Come on, verse 9. The Lord is what? Good to all. Say this, there's no respect of persons with him. Number four, the Lord is good to all. No respect of persons with him. No respect. What he does for one, he will do for another. He's good to all. Now, 
everybody look at me here. Have you ever seen God um, exercise partiality on who gets forgiveness and salvation? Have you ever seen that happen? That the Lord sifts them and he says, this is a really bad boy. He has... <laughs> <laughs> You're a bad boy. <laughs> He's a really bad boy. Are you getting what I'm saying here? And so, um, it can't be one message and you will now come out and say, I'm born again. No. No. He needs to attend like four crusades. Be under heavy conviction. Then we'll say he can Do you get what I'm saying here? No. At any point in time, you believe the message. Irrespective of where you have been. No partiality with God on who gets saved. Now, if God is not partial to the unbeliever, how much more is children? If the Lord does not measure the mercy of forgiveness, why will he measure the mercy of healing? Can you listen to what I'm saying here? Which means nowhere in our mind do we think that God at any point in time will ration the mercy of forgiveness. We tell people, irrespective of where you have been and what you have done, believe in this message. He that believeth is what? A new creation. All things are passed away, irrespective. If we believe that much, that God is so benevolent to the unbeliever, how much more you in the house? So, me, healing is the children's bread. Oh, you didn't say it well. I said healing is the children's bread. Now, people have said it that, you know, the children there means it's the babe. So, health is the uh, men's bread. All of those things. Eh? Healing is the children's bread. Are you get what I'm saying? Because you can be a mature man and yet your health is challenged. Does not mean you became a child. Are you following what I'm saying here? But guess what? Healing is the children's bread. You know why he said healing is the children's bread? Because in the mindset of the Jews, God changed what they thought about bread from the days of manna. In essence, bread is always in super abundance. It is something you don't have to pay for. It is something God provides easily. All you have to do is to go and scoop what you need. Are you following what I'm saying here? So when he said healing is the children's bread, their mind went back to their forebears who went out every day and they scooped as much as they needed without God ever saying, it's enough. Somebody following what I'm saying here? Tell me the Lord is good to all. Come on, say it again. The Lord is good to all. Come on, say it again. The Lord is good to all. Somebody should check for that growth. <laughs> Check that growth, it's gone. You know, some of you are waiting for hands to be laid on you. No, no. The word of God is a double-edged sword. It's cutting, rearranging, sewing. Are you getting what I'm saying here? Putting things back. You don't have to wait. The miracles and the healings are starting already. Number five. Write this down. His tender mercies are over all his works. Say with me, tender mercies. Not just mercies. Say with me, tender mercies. All right, say this with me. His tender mercies is over my life. Hmm. Do you remember that song? They are new every morning, new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness, O oh Lord. When he says the steadfast love of the Lord, he's talking about the mercies of the Lord. The steadfast love His mercies never close to our end They are new every morning New Psalm 6 verse 2. Everybody rise up on your feet and we're going to pray now. You every morning. Psalm 6 verse 2. Can we read verse 2 together? Just a second. Can we read verse 2 together? Psalm 6 verse 2. One to go. David cry out for 
the mercy of the Lord. Everybody read one more time. Have mercy, O Lord, for I am weak. O Lord, heal me, for my bones are vexed. Next verse, verse 3. Verse 3. My soul. So it's not just bodily healings. My soul is also, also so vexed. But thou, O Lord, how long? There's what is called the prayer of faith. How do we lean in on the mercy of God? It is by the prayer of faith. Every time people lean in to the mercy of God. That's what Jesus said. Paul said, pardon me. He said, come to the throne of grace. Come to that throne in prayer with boldness to receive what? Grace. And what? Find mercy. Is there anybody who needs the mercy of God? Is there anybody in the auditorium here today who needs the mercy of God? I, I know you are very skillful. You have everything sorted out by yourself. But some of us know we need the help of God. Some of us know we need the mercy of the Lord. The Bible tells us what the prayer of faith is. It says, The prayer of a righteous man availeth much. The earnest, effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man. I don't know what it is you came to church this morning with. What condition it is. It may not be a bodily condition. It may be in your mind. It might be in your business. I don't know what the issue is. But you know you need the mercy of the Lord. Now somebody with a loud voice shout it. Have mercy upon me, O Lord. Oh boy. I would, you, I would to God you understood how powerful that statement is. Jesus said, I can of myself do nothing. You know that you need the Lord to step in and help you. Have mercy upon me, O Lord. Maybe you're sick in your body. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy upon me. There's a new chapter open unto you and you're believing for wisdom. Have mercy upon me. You've been in lack for so long in your life. Have mercy upon me. There's that condition that has lingered for the longest of time. Have mercy upon me. With a loud voice, wherever you are, set your face before the Lord. And I want everybody praying. I know a lot of you are sequestered, packed in those chairs. You can come out into the aisle if you need space. This is not the time to be praying corporate prayer. You can't ask for mercy corporately. No, there's a cry. The Bible says, blind Bartimaeus cried out, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy upon me. Prayer is our application for mercy. Prayer is our application for mercy. Lord, I've confessed all I know to confess. Lord, I've declared your word like I know to declare it. Lord, I have done this. I have done that. I have sown seeds. I have done all of this. Now I turn to your mercy. Have mercy upon me. Oh, have mercy upon me. Have mercy upon me. Have mercy upon me, oh Lord. Please and please, don't let the person beside you rob you of your blessing. Some people know they need to be shouting and screaming, rolling on the floor with tears you know that where you are in your life now if mercy does not step in it's a done deal there are some of you that need to come forward and lay before the lord at the altar jesus thou son of david have mercy upon me have mercy upon me this is not a time to be turning around like a like ping pong it's not a time to be throwing your weak in every direction no you are shouting out loud, Jesus. It could be a sickness in your body. There's a pain in your body. There's a pain in your body. As you cry out for the mercy of God, you will discover that that pain is gone from you. You will discover that that growth is gone from you. Now with a louder voice, your gaze on the Lord Jesus Beg the person beside you, come out of that chair and lay before the Lord. Pray before the Lord. That business has been on the same level. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy upon me. This is not just a healing service. It's called mercy and miracles. There will be the miracles of healing, but there will be the miracles of changed lives. Protocol, allow them, allow them. You stand here. Whoever wants to lay before the Lord can lay before the Lord. 
you stand here. Whoever wants to come out and lay before the Lord should lay before the Lord. Seeking the face of the Lord. And oh, by the way, we are not praying. We are not done in another two minutes. It's not a two minutes prayer. No. Your life depends on this. Somebody's life is hanging in the balance. Somebody's life is hanging in the balance. Somebody's life is hanging in the balance. Listen, I know your mascara is expensive. I know your wig is expensive. But hear me, the mercy of God is greater. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy upon me. I am weak. I've come to the end of myself. Jesus, thou son of David. For those who don't have line space, you can kneel by the altar. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy upon me. You have no business looking at anybody here. People are rewriting their stories. This is one prayer. This is one prayer that he will never refuse. This is one prayer that he will never refuse. Oh God, I have hovered around this mountain for too long. Have mercy upon me. Oh God, this is not my end. Have mercy upon me. I have confessed and confessed. I have done all that I know to do. I am not seeing the answers I'm expecting. Jesus, have mercy upon me. 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 Jesus, help me. Jesus, have mercy upon me. We are taking the prayer to the next level. To the next level. To the next level. To the next level. Stop shaking around on one spot. Stop shaking around on one spot. Pray from the depth of your heart. I can of myself do nothing. I can of myself do nothing. Here this human connection will fail you. Human connection will fail you. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy upon me. We have 10 minutes more to pray. If you are tired, you can sit down. It's fine. But some of us are processing destiny. Oh God, I can of myself do nothing. Have mercy upon me. I have tried every idea in the book. I have tried every idea in the book. I have done everything I know. I have done everything I know. Oh God, my baby. Oh God, my business. Oh God, my life. Oh God, the mistakes of yesterday will not color my today. Oh God, atatala barakataya. Shenemente fretele mo. Rabalabade. Ebrabababababa. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy upon me. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy upon me. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy upon me.
matter of concern whatever name it is called whether it's an ailment in your body whether it's a sickness in your body whether it is as concerns your life the way your life is turning out whether it's as concerns your ministry as it concerns your marriage whatever name it is called whatever you have lifted before the Lord I decree and I declare today as a servant of the most high God let the mercy of God take over. I decree and I declare. Let the mercy of God take over. Oh, Lord, we are not asking for just a change. We are not just asking for a nice miracle. No, mercy rewrites stories. Mercy completely rewrites stories. I decree and I declare that by the mercy of God, by this time next week Sunday you will be telling a different story in the name of Jesus everyone under the sound of my voice who errors from yesterday I'm mitigating against today I decree and I declare let the mercy of God flood your life let the mercy of God flood your life let the mercy of God flood your life in the name of Jesus. Anyone unhappy with their life. Anyone dissatisfied with their life. Anyone dissatisfied with where you are. You know this is not where I ought to be. I decree and I declare. In the most unexpected way. Let mercy intervene now. In the name of Jesus. There are many Josephs. Who today are in pits? There are many Josephs who today are in prison. There are many Esthers who are not known. I decree and I declare by the mercy of God, rise up now. Step into your dominion. Step into your dominion. Step into royalty in the name of Jesus. Somebody with a loud voice praying the Holy Ghost. Bust out in other tongues where you are. Kakata lava raba lava ya. Shede ge de ge bora kata. Ora pande ge ge giata nani. In the name of Jesus, lay your hands on that part of your body where you need a healing. Anybody under the sound of my voice who needs a healing, whatever part of your body it is where you need a healing, now in the name of Jesus. Let healing mercy flow. Now in the name of Jesus. Let healing mercy flow. Now in the name of Jesus. Let healing mercies flow. I command infirmity out of your body. I command the pain out of your body. Thou foul spirit of affliction. 
thou foul spirit of infirmity, I command you to lose your hold now. In the name of Jesus, be healed from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. Be healed in your blood. Be healed in your mind. Be healed in your bones. Be healed in your tissues. Be healed in your organs. Be healed in the name of Jesus. For his mercies and your red forever. singing it with meaning now. For his mercies and your Now put a dance to it. Give the Lord a big shout. By this time next week, you will be telling a different story. By this time next week, you will be telling a different story. By this time next week, you will be telling a different story. Shout amen. Thank you for your glory. Thank you for your power. We give you the praise. Many miracles everywhere in the auditorium already. While we continue with the service, there are one or two other things we need to do before we, are, we close the service so we can shut down early enough. If you receive the miracle of healing, please walk to the pastors, the leaders at the back and document your testimony. What a day. What a day. Say this with me. This is my month. The month of March. Come and say it again. This is my month. 
the month of March, where mercy became my overwhelming advantage, rewriting my story. Give the Lord a big hand, come on. Give the Lord a big hand. Please, you may be seated. Hallelujah. For the sake of time, I mean, we won't, our normal custom, having the people come out quickly for the sake of time, we won't do that. Please register your testimonies and miracles with the leaders at the back. And then we have doctors as well to check you. Glory to God. Tell the person beside you it's a new day. Now, let me make you a promise. Let me make you a promise. Um, by the time you come in next Sunday, you will not be hot in the auditorium, okay? So let me make you, I've not made you that promise before, but let me make you that promise. Um, <clears throat> a lot of logistic issues. Everything was done to make you comfortable, but, um, you know, like Paul said, Satan hindered us. <laughs> but it can't hinder the mercy of God. Glory to God. But then be rest assured, you come in next week Sunday, you don't have the issues with being hot. I can see how that your expensive makeup has melted completely. That's a sacrifice unto the Lord. When they were singing that the number of my scars is the number of my victory, that's what they mean. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Please look at the person and tell them congratulations. Look, look at your makeup. See, see how it has finished. What a sacrifice unto the Lord. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now, it's a new day for us in this house. Um, it's a new day. It's a new day. It's a new day for us in the house. One of the things the Lord has said to me, the season is changing, and our trust and our assignment will be more apostolic henceforth. Now, scripturally so. Scripturally so. Um, scripturally so, because it's important you understand the trust of an apostolic ministry. Scripturally so. All right? And by that I mean um, <clears throat> um, God giving a door of utterance to the body, uh, number one. Number two, um, the establishment of, um, of works. And in this case, a local church. It could have any expression, whatever name it's called, around the nations of the earth. Number three, physical presence in terms of taking the message to the nations of the earth. So um, the season ahead of us is a very busy season. All right? Very busy. <clears throat> I have served the Lord faithfully and they bought over one house by the instruction of the Lord. But the Lord said it's time to look beyond. Uh, so the, <clears throat> as the approach to ministry is going to change in the days to come um, because God is sending us to the body. And I think it's a beautiful thing to know that you are a part of that sending. Are you getting what I'm saying? You are a part of it. You are partakers of my grace. That's what the Apostle Paul said. Now, the first important thing in this regard is the need for partners. Now, I know that every last Friday on our Watchman Prayer Hour, we give everybody the opportunity to partner. Um, but you see, when the Lord is leading us in this direction then we must put some serious structure to our partner, um, partner system. All right, serious structure to it. We need to know those who are partnering with us. You see, because what you give in offerings and tithes is to run the church and do everything that happens in the church. But then we have to go beyond. Are you following what I'm saying? We have to go beyond. And in going beyond, the local assembly should not suffer for it. So God, partnership is God's idea to bring kings and priests into covenant relationship. Who are kings? Kings are those who are sent out into the world and doing everything and all the rest. Priests are those that God establishes within the temple and the kings bring in the spoils of the world to help with what is going on within the temple, the furtherance of the gospel of God. So I want to thank first and foremost our partners. Even when there was no structure around it, there are people who on a consistent basis have gone over above their tithes and offerings and orders to partner with us. Last year, we were able to plant six churches. I'm not sure of the record. Is it six or five? I don't know. Um, uh, churches and all the rest, able to do a couple of other things. This year, um, sincerely speaking, it's, 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 we are running with the horses. Let me just put it that way. I mean, the things that the Lord has said to be done and the Lord has shown. So we want to put some structure to it. Uh, where's Brother Ono? Please come quickly. Um, he's going to run us through a demo of how our partnership system works. Can I get a microphone for him or something? How our partnership system works. Because um, we want to capture your data. And this is for all of our churches as well that are connected. 
We want to be able to capture your data. And um, please, quick, 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 let's do this quickly. We want to be able to capture your data so that Pastor Diola and I can pray for you. Let's know who our partners are and those who are sending us to the nations of the earth to do the things that God has called us to do. Okay, praise the Lord. So we have a new partnership portal. On... Can you all hear him? Okay, so I, I think they need to give him volume. I know okay, so we have a new partnership portal at ioajani.com slash partnership, if they can project that on the screen. Uh, basically, it's a very simple portal where you register with your basic details. Um, Are they projecting it on the screen? I need somebody to give me an answer, because I would want everybody to see it. Are they projecting ioajani.com slash partnership. Praise the Lord. Go yeah, on. so uh, there's a simple form where you fill in your details and... Uh, once you fill in your details, it the creates demo an video, account. Is it available? No, it's not available. Continue. Yeah, so when you uh, create an account, it creates a unique partners, partners, partnership code for you. It's, uh, it's, it's Petra plus five All right, five all right. So that letters. people are able to get it. Get the demo video to them, okay. and you come back when you're ready. Right. Bye-bye. Now, second thing, because it's important you see the demo video. All oh, this one is story. See what he's saying, so you understand what he's saying exactly. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, partners. The Lord bless you, honor you in the name of Jesus Christ. And I'm believing God that today more people will sign up to be partners. All right? More will sign up to be partners. And help us take this message of the gospel to the nations of the earth. Um, I, I'm believing the Lord within a frame of time to have 100,000 partners. That's what I'm believing for. 100,000 partners. We're going to start from where we are to lead us to, uh, you know, <clears throat> where God is taking us to. Now, secondly, in terms of the face of the ministry, um, the Lord began to speak to, Pastor Dola, can you please come? The Lord began to speak to um, Pastor Dola and I separately, and then um, we had to compare notes on what the Lord was saying. I think you should celebrate this gracious woman of God. So let me check very well. Those who are not celebrating... I've seen you. Thank you. Thank you. I've seen you very well. Praise God. And the Opal is well. Okay. Praise the Lord. Now, um, there's a new phase, a new stage in the ministry that the Lord is bringing us into. Like I said, please, you may be seated. Um, it's more apostolic and all the rest. Now, for the next season, the Lord will have us um, spend a lot more time with the Lagos Assembly for the next season. The Lord would have us spend us a, a lot more time. Now, which means that we are going to operate out of Lagos, Nigeria, from, and that's from next week's Sunday, all right? From next week's Sunday. We're going to operate out of Lagos, Nigeria, from next week's Sunday. Um, this is the instruction of the Lord. And um, <clears throat> when God gives instructions, it's for our good, all right? It's, I mean, pretty much the Lord said to me some years ago, leave Lagos, come into Abuja. And then the Lord says, I mean, I, I won't give you the details of exactly what the Lord said, but that's the season we are in now. And then so um, whilst we are with you, we may not be physically present every time like you would love us to be. Somebody came to meet me and said, if I knew this early enough, I would have taken advantage. Well, um, whatever you have received is good enough. In Jesus' name. So we're with you in heart and all the rest, but there are new grounds that needs to be broken up and more time is going to be spent with the Lagos work, um, you know, planting churches there, establishing churches and all of the rest within the Lagos work. Now, to that end, we will have a new resident pastor in the Wuse Church. Um, and because there are two churches presently connected with the Wuse Church, the Apo Church and the Maraba Church, the resident pastor will as well serve as the um, regional pastor for Abuja. So he oversees himself and his wife oversees what happens in Wuse and then what happens in Maraba. Now, believe you me, the same grace that is on my life, I have communicated to him and um, they carry the same grace. The Bible says, I have no other person like-minded. That's what Paul said of Timothy. And I can say this about the same person as well. I'd like us to welcome Pastor Joseph Zimoan. Um,
Praise the Lord. And, and in absentia, Pastor Kachi Zimoan, his wife. Um, she's, she's connected with us from Portacot now. They've served as resident pastors, Portacot work. Um, but now the Lord has given them. <laughs> but now the Lord is given. Now that has to be Sam. That's definitely not a maker. <laughs> A maker is string. Sam, Sam is black American. All right, so um, the Lord is giving them um, greater responsibility in the house. He served on our executive council. Um, um, you know, pretty much is the pastor of the pastors within the ministry, literally. You know, and now God has brought him here with um, primary assignment being the Wuse work. Now, if you love us, you will love them. If you, I mean, if you, if you believe that I hear God, if you believe that I'm led of the Spirit, then all the love, support, and strength, and everything that you give to us, you will give them to make the work happen. Now, Jesus left. As great as Jesus was, the work multiplied. If Jesus remained on the face of the earth, the church would not be as large as it is today. So transitions are for promotions. Transitions are for promotions. If Jesus could leave and things were okay, then Ayo can leave and things will be better. <laughs> Glory to God. So this is just the beginning. Greater days ahead in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now I lay my hands upon you in the name of Jesus Christ, the head of the church. And I decree and I declare every grace, every blessing, every anointing of the Spirit that God has bestowed me with and that the Lord has blessed me with. May it now rest upon you. Amen. I decree and I declare that the hand of the Lord will be strong upon you Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Moses left. It was Joshua that took them into the promised land. You will take this church to the promised land. Amen. In the name of Jesus, let my cloak rest upon you. Let my garment rest upon you. In the name of Jesus, grace, wisdom, power. In the mighty name of Jesus. By laying hands upon you, I lay hands upon Kachi Zuman, Pastor Kachi, your wife, and I decree and I declare. And every grace that rests on her Diola, Jani Pastor Diola, now rests upon her. Amen. You both will do mighty works. Amen. Supernatural speed by the Spirit. Amen. What took me three years, you will do in three months. Amen. I decree acceleration. Amen. I decree from glory to glory. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. May the Lord preserve you. Preserve your heart. Preserve your family. In the name of Jesus. There shall be no hole in your armor. In the name of Jesus. There shall be no hole in your armor. In the name of Jesus, there shall be no mole in your army. In the name of Jesus, there shall be no mole in your army. In the name of Jesus, the hearts of all men are joined to you. In the precious name of Jesus, the grace of men, the gift of men now rests. In the name of Jesus. So be it. In Jesus' mighty name. Now, Petra will say, Behold your pastor. Let's welcome Pastor Joseph Zimwan and in absentia, Pastor Kachi Zimwan. Um, I know our other churches are connected just to help with the confusion that some may have right now. Because Potakot is wondering, Who is my pastor? Pastor Abraham Ademola is the new resident pastor of Potako Church. And um, whilst Pastor Diola and I are going to, in this season, operate more out of Lagos, 
We're not resident pastors. I told you that the season has changed. Um, our new Lagos resident pastor is Pastor Tosi Arugu Jr. Hallelujah. Uh, so, it's a season of growth. It's a season of, and all of that. But it's from glory to glory. Can we lift our hands and bless God for this house together? Please, those of us connected online as well, bless God for this house. 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 Put your hand on your shoulder. Put your hand on your shoulder. Bless God for this house. Bless God for this house. Bless God for our churches. The Lord has spoken to me that we are entering a season of supernatural acceleration. All of our churches are exploding in number, exploding in reach. It's a new season. I've heard, I've seen it. So I know what the Lord, and this is all in preparation. We're strengthening our stakes. We're enlarging our dwelling to receive and accommodate that which the Lord has for us. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we bless you. Come on, bless the Lord for your house. Bless the Lord for this spiritual house. If this house has been a blessing to you, bless the Lord for this house. Father, we give you praise and we thank you. Blessed be your holy name. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. Amen, amen and amen. Now, you may be seated very quickly. Are you now ready? One minute, please. One minute. You run through the video and then... Um, you run through the video and then we're out of here. Can you just run? All right, so you may need to... You can use. Okay, you can play. You can press play. So um, we have the page and a basic registration here. So you just fill in, you know, basic details. If you notice, there's a frequency down there. So if you want to pay weekly, monthly, or quarterly, you have the option to choose down there. Uh, so when the video gets there, you'll see a drop down for weekly payments, monthly payments, and quarterly payments. And then you can select the current currency, uh, Naira dollar pounds, and so on. So, uh, okay, so I selected weekly here, and an account is created for me. So uh, after signing up, you'll get an email with a unique partner code. So you have a unique partner code. Um, so that's the email. You get a welcome email with a code. So you can copy this code and log in on the same page uh, with your phone number as the password. So you enter the partner code here, and then add the phone number which you use to register. And that's how you log in to the portal. Now when you log in, you see uh, I, I selected weekly, so a, a payment link. Uh, you click get link, and it creates a payment link for you. And then you hit pay now. And once you click pay now, it takes you to a payment gateway where you can make the payment. So uh, we have we have Flutterwave right now. We are adding support for Paystack uh, soon. But right now you can pay on Flutterwave. This is just a test payment, so it's not this is not real, but uh, it works exactly how you're seeing it on the screen. Uh, enter your card details, and then you pay. Enter your PIN, enter a one-time one -time password. And that's it. So you've paid for the first period. So uh, one, one other thing is that if you sign up for weekly, then every week you'll get an email reminding you to, to, uh, to generate an invoice for you to pay every week. If you sign up monthly, every month you get an email. So the system gets to remind you, just in case you forget, gets to remind you every time you need to make a payment. So that's. And then I think the other bit is that you're able to see all your transactions. So you're able to tell, this is how much I've partnered this year. So it's not just, I mean, frivolous giving. You are able to say, okay, I, this is my partnership. At the end of a year, you can say, this is what I gave in partnership. All right, because it's important you're able to give account of these things. Now, some would like to do transfers rather than this. So I'm sure that the, um, the account details as well will be provided for those who want to do transfers. But when they do the transfers, the narration has to be 
their partner's, what's it called? Their partner's code. So your partner's code, when you're doing a transfer, your narration will be your partner's code. And that way, from the back end, they can help you update your, because this updates by itself, but if you do a transfer, it does not update by itself, so that everything can be captured, and they can help you update your giving and all the rest. We want you to be responsible with your giving and with your seeds, and that's why we are doing this. The Lord bless you richly in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Please go ahead and register those who want to be partners, new partners, old partners, even if you're an old partner, please re-register again so we can capture the new details all across our churches. At this point, I think we should welcome Petra will say, Pastor, to come wrap up the service. Oh, we have a Thanksgiving. All right, so after the Thanksgiving, then we wrap up the service. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. It's a new season, and we are so excited at what God is doing in the house. How many of us are excited? Praise the Lord. Amen. We have a Thanksgiving every first Sunday of the month. We have our Thanksgiving, so when I baby dedication, a marriage dedication, or a birthday Thanksgiving, people come forward to give thanks to God for all that he has done for them. And today we have a baby dedication. Hallelujah. We will take it very quickly. The family, family of Mr. and Mrs. Lucky Johnson will be dedicating their baby girl to the Lord this Sunday morning. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. So we'll call on the friends, the families, well-wishers of Mr. Lucky and Mrs. Mercy Johnson to please go behind and dance forward as the choir gives us a special music for them. Church, as our custom is, we love to rejoice with those who are rejoicing. So please get up on your feet and let's dance in thanksgiving for what God has done for their family. Quiet. You are marvelous, yeah. You are marvelous, yeah. You are marvelous, yeah. Marvelous, yeah. Marvelous, yeah. You are marvelous, yeah.
and children are the heritage of the Lord committed by him to the parents for care, protection, and training for his glory. Hallelujah. It is fitting that parents recognize this holy obligation and their responsibility to God in this matter. The scripture admonishes that children should be brought to the house of the Lord to be dedicated. Amen. Jacob trained her own child, Moses, in the way of the Lord. Hannah recognized that her son belonged to the Lord. Even Jesus Christ himself was brought to the temple while he was yet an infant in line with the scriptures. Now the parents of this child, brother Lucky and sister Mercy, have recognized their holy obligation and now they bring back to the Lord the treasure which he has entrusted to them. Hallelujah. And they have brought their child, their baby for dedication. Before I go on, I'm sure that there's something you want to say, you want to share. A quick testimony um, before we proceed. Please move closer. Please move closer. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. We really want to say thank you to God Almighty for the success of our child delivery. And we want to thank the church for their love and support. Say may God bless you all in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right, parents, I'm going to give you a charge, and I would like you to ascend by just saying I do or we do to this charge, okay? All right, you have a responsibility before God whom you bring your child for dedication today. And I charge you to bring up this child in a manner that is consistent with the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. I charge you to teach her to know what it means to be a Christian and how to walk in the way of the word. Knowing that when you train up, train up a child in the way he or she should go, when she is old, she will not depart from him, from it. I charge you to make your home where she will receive Christian instruction and you see to it that she is brought to the house of the Lord to receive additional instruction. Lastly, I charge you to see that this child fulfills God's plan for her life. Amen. So do you pledge, and I would like to hear you say we do, do you pledge to bring up your daughter in the fear and admonition of the Lord? Yes, we do. Do you pledge to lead her to know Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior? Yes, we do. Do you pledge to speak the word of God consistently and continually over her? Yes, yes we, we do. do. And by the power of the Holy Spirit at work, you shall accomplish this in the name of Jesus. Church, this is the part I love the most. This is a new child that God has given us. The Bible says he wants godly seed. This is a godly seed. I'd like us to please rise up on our feet and stretch forth our hands and begin to pray for this child. This most likely might be the only time you would ever see and pray for this child, all right? So I want you to stretch forth your hands and begin to pray for this child. I want you to decree, decree blessings into the life of this child. Don't speak empty words. Don't speak vain words. Use your words, all right? Before you pray in other tongues, use your words. Declare that she is blessed. Her name is Adesuash. Adesua, begin to declare that Adesua is blessed in the name of Jesus. She is heavily and mightily favored of the Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, everything she needs for life and for godliness, Father, in the name of Jesus, you provide for her in Jesus' name. Come on, let's lift up our voice and pray for her. I'm going to give us just 30 more seconds. Speak words of life. What would you pray for your own children? What would you decree for your own children? I want you to declare and decree over the life of this child. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We give you all the praise. This one shall grow in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus. She will walk in the light of God's word all the days of her life in the name of Jesus. You will bring joy to the hearts of all that know you. In the name of Jesus, I declare over you are this word that from today, joy, joy will surround you. In the name of Jesus, you will never be a cause of concern. You will never be a cause of sorrow to your family, to your parents, and to the world at large in the name of Jesus. And that's why I bless you today. Let the hand of God rest upon you mightily. In the name of Jesus, you are marked with the mark of Jesus Christ. Today you are dedicated. Every force of the enemy begins to intelligently avoid you. In the name of Jesus, you are marked with the name of Jesus. That causes you to be favored in the name of Jesus. You will grow in stature. You will grow in favor with God and with man in the name of Jesus. Now I declare that all the days of your life you are heavily supplied. You will not know lack in the name of Jesus. What your parents need to do to provide for you will consistently flow into their hands in Jesus' name. And that's why you will get the best of everything. You will get the best of life. 
you will get the best of every feed in the name of Jesus. Now let the angels of God begin to keep you. The Bible says he has given his angels charge over us to keep us in all our ways. Let the angels of God from now begin to keep you. You will not fall. You will not be sick. You will not have problems for the angels of God surround you in the mighty name of Jesus. Today we dedicate you, dedicate you unto the Lord in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. Now, the amazing thing about this beautiful girl is that she was born on the 25th of December. She's a Christmas gift, isn't she? Let's put our hands together for Jesus. I'd like to call on Daddy to have Daddy and Mommy please come together. The baby dedication certificate for your daughter. Congratulations. Let's put our hands together for them. All right. Praise God. Choir, you can give them a song as they go back to their seats. Friends and families, if you have a Thanksgiving offering with you, there are envelopes, there are baskets in front of you. Please drop your Thanksgiving offering in the baskets in front of you as you dance back. Choir. To Araya Mama. To Hallelujah. We're going to quickly give our tithes and our offering this morning. Amen. God has, been, has blessed us this morning. And you know, the Bible says in Proverbs 3, verse, verse 9 and verse 10, it speaks about honoring the Lord with our substance, with the first fruits of our increase. It says, so our bands shall be filled with plenty. Your, that speaks about your bank accounts, speaks about your storage spaces, your wardrobes. Amen. Praise God. And your band, your, he says that your presses shall burst with new wine. Praise God. So we're going to give our tithes and our offerings together right now. Um, now, if you're giving the tithe, I will ask you to stand. If you're giving the offering too, we would rise together. We take it together. The details are on the screen. If you're doing a transfer, if you're you know, giving via cash, you can use the offering envelopes as well. Praise God. Let's pray over our tithes and our offering together. Hallelujah. Praise God. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We thank you because as we honor you with our substance, your word says that honor the Lord, that if we honor you, you would honor us. And you spoke to us in your word that there will be an overflow. We release our faith, we believe, and we receive an overflow of blessings. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, the work of our hands are blessed. We are blessed in our going out and in our coming in. Thank you for ideas, insights, and concepts from the Spirit of God. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Please, you may be seated. Glory to God. A few announcements to take note of first of all our daily watchman prayer hour continues monday to friday 6 a.m west african time you can join on mixlr at petra christian center and then also follow our instagram and do at watchman prayer hour praise god midweek service continues in this auditorium 6 p.m on wednesday and you can join us from any part of the world as well by following our service on any of our streaming platforms. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Now, um, Irene sisters, shout hallelujah. Praise God. I can't hear you. You can do better. I can shout hallelujah. So Irene sister would present tea talk with Pastor Adiola Ajani for young wives, moms, and expectant moms. Praise God. 
for young wives, moms, and expectant moms. This Saturday, Saturday, the March, March 9th, 9.30 a.m. At this venue, you're going to be having a special tea talk time. It's going to be phenomenal. So ensure that you'll be a part of it. Invite your friends. Invite your neighbors. And ensure that you are here. The time again is 9.30 a.m. Praise God. Now, we have 21 days of faith. Faith that overcomes the world. Praise God. Woo! We are going to move some mountains. Praise God. With our senior pastor, Pastor Ayo and Pastor Ayo Ajani. Praise God. March the 11th to the 30th. It's going to be every single day by 9 p.m. West Africa time. And it's exclusively on YouTube at official Ayo Ajani. So ensure that you set out your reminders. We look forward to it. Praise God. It's going to be a phenomenal time. Lastly, all right, join a Petra Home Cell group today. Praise God. You can get the details closer of, on the cells closest to you at the registration desk. Um, one, I think two more things. One, um, those that are all those that are in the music ministry, there's good news for you. You need to wait behind after the service to see. As senior pastor, Pastor Ayo Ajani, there is a word for you. There's an information for you. So all those who are in the music ministry, please ensure that you wait behind after the service. Praise God. And then also there is um, a meeting. I mean, those of us who are students, campus students, after the service, just wait behind and to see the pastor. Praise God. Hallelujah. Have you been blessed? Okay, so before we take our mantra, we'd like to recognize some special guests this morning. Now, this is a special service, so we've taken in extra time, but I mean, thank you for waiting. If you're first worshiping with us for the very first time in Petra Christian Center, we'd like to meet with you with a show of hands. Can you just wave at me? This is your first time. This is your first time. Church, can we appreciate them? Please keep waving, keep waving. Okay, can, please, can you rise on your feet? Those of us worshiping with us for the very first time, please rise up on your feet. Church, let's keep appreciating them. Thank you. Wow, welcome, welcome, welcome. All right, please, can you take your Bibles, take your bags, whatever you came here with. There's someone waving with a prop at the back. All right, so please just take whatever you came here with and walk to majestically toward the back for a warm reception. So can we keep clapping and appreciate them? Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Please keep clapping, keep clapping, keep clapping. We appreciate you. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Okay, so now church, can we rise as we take our mantra together? Glory to God. I want you to declare it with boldness, with faith. Say with me, I am Petra. I am built solid on the rock of the world that never fails. I am Petra. My faith is active and produces great results. I am Petra. My hopes are faithless for I dream new dreams every day i am petra i am an extension of the love and the character of jesus to my world shout it one more time i am petra god bless you god bless you have yourself a wonderful day